हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी शैल बिगिन अ न्यू चैप्टर फ्रॉम योर फर्स्ट इयर सिलेबस टिल नाउ यू हैव फॉलोड सम 11 टू 12 ब्रिज कोर्स क्लासेस इन केमिस्ट्री एंड आई होप फ्रॉम दीज ब्रिज कोर्स क्लासेस अ पार्ट ऑफ योर बेसिक केमिस्ट्री नॉलेज हैज़ इंक्रीज्ड एंड इट विल श्योरली सप्लीमेंट यू एंड हेल्प यू इन द फोर कमिंग क्लासेस where the same knowledge of bridge course will be utilized in understanding the concepts now we shall begin the 12th chapter of your first year syllabus that is organic chemistry some basic principles and techniques this chapter is the first chapter in your organic chemistry portion now before we begin let us see how organic chemistry began you might have studied these this part in your schools also that is earlier when chemistry was just beginning maybe around at the early 19th century when chemistry was just beginning any compound that was found was classified either into organic or inorganic on what basis see if any compound is obtained from living sources living sources means like plants and animals then such compounds were categorized as organic compounds and if there is any compound obtained or found or discovered from non living sources non living sources means like rocks minerals etc then they were called inorganic compounds so how were compounds classified they were either classified as organic or they were classified as inorganic on what basis based on the source from which they were collected if they were obtained from living sources like plants and animals they were categorized as organic compounds and if they were obtained from non living sources that is like rocks minerals etc then they were called as inorganic compounds but then came a scientist by name lavoisier by name lavoisier lavoisier <coughs> he gave an idea that all organic compounds will essentially contain all organic compounds will essentially contain carbon and hydrogen in them as main constituents what does this mean sir he said he said that if you have an organic compound with you then it must contain it will contain and it should contain carbon and hydrogen he did not describe about any other elements what he told is if you have an organic compound then it is bound to contain carbon and hydrogen today we know that there are innumerable number of organic compounds by what property by virtue of catenation property of carbon isn't it so carbon has a unique ability to bind with other carbon atoms and as a result of which we are able to see innumerable number of uncountable number of organic compounds in the nature this is by virtue of what property catenation isn't it then now this was according to lavoisier however even before lavoisier gave the idea that organic compounds contain carbon and hydrogen there was a slight confusion there were some scientists who used to prepare compounds in the laboratory and they and they told it is organic in nature people did not accept this fact because there existed a theory called as vital force theory what theory vital force theory when was this theory started it was started way back in 1815 in 1815 a noted chemist called or scientist called berzelius he stated that for preparing <coughs> any organic compound it is impossible 
means what did he say you cannot prepare organic compounds in the lab why according to him he was of the opinion that to prepare an organic compound a mysterious force is required a vital force is required that mysterious force is not within the reach of human beings means a godly force a force which is mysterious which is not in our hands like us human beings so such a force is required to prepare an organic to prepare an organic compound so we cannot prepare any organic compound in the laboratory now you might you may know who creates human beings it is god who creates plants and animals it is god so he said that if you are extracting or obtaining an organic compound from plants and animals this means that that organic compound is coming from a living source and who is the creator of life god so according to berzelius he believed that any organic compounds preparation or synthesis or manufacture requires a special force requires a mysterious force requires a vital important force that force resides only with god it is not within the reach of human beings so we cannot prepare organic compounds and people believed this too they also thought that yes we cannot prepare organic compounds because for preparing such compounds we need a special force however however after some years in 1828 there came another scientist by name frederick wohler by name frederick wohler he prepared an organic compound in the lab now people who saw this experiment who saw that wohler had prepared an organic compound in the lab began to question whose ideas began to question berzelius idea what was his idea that preparing an organic compound is impossible by human beings because for preparing such compounds you need a vital force the same theory was called vital force theory when did this theory got disproved it began to get disproved by the initiator or the pioneer frederick wohler how by preparing an organic compound in the lab without requiring any mysterious help without having any mysterious any vital force what did he prepare he prepared urea it was wohler who prepared urea you may ask sir what is urea urea is one of the by products of urine in our urine also urea is present as a by product now you may say sir if urea is present in urine then urine comes from a living source so it is also an organic compound true true it is an organic compound but it was prepared in the lab from other organic compounds from other inorganic compounds also like ammonium cyanate ammonium cyanate this compound is called ammonium cyanate now ammonium cyanate is an inorganic compound this fellow frederick wohler heated ammonium cyanate he heated ammonium cyanate and got urea as the product now when urea an organic compound is prepared in the lab by heating some inorganic compound people began to question berzelius ideas you said that for preparing compounds organic compounds we need a mysterious force then how come did wohler prepare this compound so the first <coughs> person to disprove vital force theory was frederick wohler this was followed by discoveries and synthesis and preparation of many other organic compounds like acetic acid acetic acid was prepared by kolbe another scientist who prepared acetic acid from inorganic sources then methane was prepared methane we know a very simple hydrocarbon this was prepared by berthelot this was prepared by berthelot and many more so many scientists prepared organic compounds in the lab and this led to the disproving of whose theory vital force theory 
today we have innumerable number of organic compounds it is because of catenation the special linking ability of carbon atom so after these compounds were prepared then lavoisier's idea was applied onto these prepared compounds that if you are calling a compound as organic compound then it should contain carbon and hydrogen in it once when vital force theory was disproved many other scientists took the job of preparing organic compounds and this led to a separate branch in chemistry called organic chemistry now in this chapter organic chemistry chapter you will study some basic principles and techniques that we utilize in organic chemistry for preparing organic compounds beginning with if you have any organic compound with you how do you say it is <coughs> organic or not so this was initiated by which person by lavoisier who said that organic compounds will contain carbon and hydrogen so how do you know that it contains carbon and hydrogen you need to analyze that compound that part is called analysis so in analyzing and identifying what is given in your hand if some compound is kept in your hand and asked identify what it is how will you identify it you will identify it by carrying out a number of tests all these tests come under one part called analysis so analysis of any organic compound involves many steps it involves many steps the first step is purification if you are given any compound in order to identify what that given compound is you need to carry out first purification you need to check whether that compound is pure or impure if it is impure you need to purify it then after the um, compound is purified you need to check the percentage of purity you need to check the percentage of purity this percentage of purity checking is done by checking its melting point boiling point and others in some cases we do not follow this second part then we have detection once you have got your pure compound then you need to identify what is present in the given compound we call that part as detection of elements compound is given to you you purify that compound now that pure compound is taken and analyzed for identifying what is present in it whether it contains carbon yes whether it contains hydrogen yes in addition to carbon and hydrogen what other elements are present that need to be identified and it is called detection of elements for each element you have different methods in order to identify them we shall study them in the forthcoming classes then after you have identified what elements are present in them then you need to estimate them we call them as estimation of elements what is meant by estimation you know what is present in the compound how much of that is present you say carbon is present how many carbons are present that is called estimation you say hydrogen is present how many hydrogen atoms are present that is estimation so once you have purified and found its percentage purity you make sure that the compound is pure then you go for detection of elements once you have identified what all elements are there in it then what you will do how many atoms of that element are present in the compound you will identify and it is called estimation of elements once you have estimated the elements once you have detected the elements then comes finding out the relative ratio relative ratio of elements sometimes these two go hand in hand that is estimation and relative ratio are one and the same some books claim so once you have identified the relative ratio of elements means what percentage of each element is present then you find out the empirical formula means empirical formula what is empirical formula it is the simpler form of a molecular formula once empirical formula is known then you will find out molecular formula then you will write the formula of a given compound this compound is so and so to arrive here to arrive at molecular formula you need to go three 
you need to go through these many steps. So we shall begin our investigation or analysis of organic compounds with the first step and that is purification of organic compounds. Now what is meant by purification? In very simple words, purification means removing impurities, making a compound pure, making a compound free from impurities, removal of contaminants. Purification in simpler word refers to removal of contaminants. What is a contaminant? Contaminant means it is nothing but impurities only. Purification Kannada Dalli Shuddhi Karana Yandhu Karayattare. Shuddhi Karana Yandhu Karayattare. Shuddhi Karana Yandhu Karayattare. Impurities Nella Tegi Beko. If an, any organic compound given to you is impure or pure, how do you check? By carrying out purification methods. On what basis do you carry out purification techniques? So the purification of any organic compound, the purification of any organic compound depends on two things. One, it depends on nature of compound you have. It depends on the nature of compound. And second, it depends on the nature of impurities present. It depends on the nature of impurities present in it. What does it mean? Say you are given some compound and I ask you to find out its purity, find out whether it is pure or not. In order to check, you might heat that compound. Upon heating, if the compound melts, a solid compound is given to you, if upon heating the compound melts, then it is of no use. Understood? So you should know the nature of compound. If I subject it to heating, whether it will melt or not, then what kind of impurities are present that need to be known. If these two are known to you, then purification becomes easier. Then purification becomes easier. So based on these two, we have based on these two criteria, we have different methods of purification techniques. You will study five techniques in this year. And these five techniques are, the first one is, the first one is sublimation. First one is sublimation. The second is crystallization. Second is crystallization. Then third, distillation. Fourth, solvent extraction solvent extraction is otherwise called differential extraction it is also called differential extraction and lastly we have chromatography so these five techniques are used in first year in order to understand what purification is and how it is used in purifying organic compounds. Beginning with sublimation, we shall study all of them one by one. Beginning with sublimation, I feel that you might not know what sublimation is or some of you might be knowing. Meanwhile, when I explain, you will be able to understand what sublimation is. You know there are three physical states, solid, liquid and gas. How do you convert a solid into liquid? A solid can be converted into liquid by heating. By heating it will melt and become liquid, isn't it? So by melting, solid can be converted into liquid by heating. Now liquid can be converted into gas. How is liquid converted into gas? liquid is converted into gas again by heating you know this method how do you convert gas into liquid gas into liquid is done by cooling or condensation similarly a liquid can be converted into solid by freezing so you have different methods to convert one physical state into another physical state Understood? One do, ghana vastu na, niu anila convert eng maadthira? 
ಅಥವಾ ದ್ರವ್ಯ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ಹೀಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನಾವು ಇಫ್ ಐ ಸಿ ನೇಮ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಟು ವಿಚ್ ಯು ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಹೀಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಯು ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಹೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಶುಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ನೇಮ್ ಎನಿ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹೀಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಅ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮೇಷನ್ ಸಮ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸಿಯ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಸಚ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಚ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮೇಬಲ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮೇಬಲ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮೇಬಲ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ದೆ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮೇಬಲ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಫೈನ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಐ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ನ್ಯಾಫ್ಥಲೀನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸೀನ್ ನ್ಯಾಫ್ಥಲೀನ್ ಆರ್ ಮಾಥ್ ಬಾಲ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಫರ್ ಕರ್ಪೂರ ಮಂಗಳಾರತಿ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಿ ಕ್ಯಾಂಫರ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹೀಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಫರ್ ಆರ್ ನ್ಯಾಪ್ಥಲೀನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡೈ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸಚ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಟು ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮೇಷನ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ ನಾವು ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನ್ಯಾಪ್ಥಲೀನ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮಾಥ್ ಬಾಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಫರ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನೌ ಇಂಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈ ನ್ಯಾಪ್ಥಲೀನ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಫರ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಡೂ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ವಿನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಪಿಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಜರ್ ಟು ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮೇಷನ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ ಹೌ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಡನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾಲೋ ದಿಸ್ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಪೌಡರ್ ಇಟ್ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಫೈನ್ ಪೌಡರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ಇಟ್ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಕಂಟೈನರ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಟು ಅ ಬೌಲ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೀಲ್ ಬೌಲ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹೌಸಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಚೈನಾ ಕ್ಲೇ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಾಸರ್ಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಡಿಶ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಲೇ ಚೈನಾ ಕ್ಲೇ ಆರ್ ಪೋರ್ಸಲೀನ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಅ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ಯು ಕೀಪ್ ಯುವರ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಚೈನಾ ಡಿಶ್ ಸಮ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್
take a glass funnel what is meant by funnel a funnel looks like this it is used to pour oil okay it is should be made up of glass you take a glass funnel invert it on to the you invert that glass funnel on to the filter paper okay once you invert this glass funnel on to the filter paper make sure that the mouth of the glass funnel this is glass funnel the mouth of the glass funnel is closed it is closed by cotton now that we call as cotton plug plugging means closing so you close the mouth of the glass funnel by means of cotton plug after this much work is done then you keep this china dish into another big container into another big container which should contain either water or it should contain sand for my convenience i'll take it sand so this container is called sand bath it is called sand bath bath essentially does not mean bathing okay sand bath is nothing but a container a big container which contains sand in it in this container you will keep china dish after this much is done then you place this on a tripod stand you place this on a tripod stand tri means three pod means leg so tripod stand and then subject it to and then subject it to heating okay once this much par work is done once this much work is done even before heating there are some requirements to be met you have taken the impure organic compound into the china dish china dish is covered with the filter paper above filter paper you are keeping an inverted glass funnel the mouth of the glass funnel is closed with the cotton we call that as cotton plug this china dish which is kept in sand bath is kept on a stand underneath the sand bath should be a burner which is not yet lighted now we call this burner as bunsen burner it is name of burner bunsen burner before lighting this the outer surface of the glass funnel the outer surface of the glass funnel is covered either with a wet cloth it is covered either with a wet cloth or with a wet paper it is covered with a wet paper then heating is done now begin heating okay after heating is started what happens what is the principle of this method it is based on the principle that certain organic compounds pass directly from solid to gaseous state without passing through liquid state only such substances that are sublimable substances they can be purified under sublimation this method is used to separate sublimable compounds from non sublimable impurities is it clear means in this technique only your organic compound should be sublimable only that compound should be able to convert from solid to gas but the impurities should be non sublimable they should not be getting converted into solid to gas so now you know the nature of the compound being separated purified and nature of the impurities present in it based on that you have subjected it to sublimation how did you do i'll again tell you how to set up the apparatus this is called apparatus this is setting of apparatus how do you keep the apparatus okay in setting the apparatus you take the impure organic compound powdered impure organic compound into a china dish the mouth of china dish is covered with a filter paper having holes in it okay over which 
an inverted glass funnel is kept with its mouth closed by a cotton plug. The outer surface of the glass funnel is covered with either wet cloth or with a wet paper. Then the china dish is kept in a sand bath which is kept on a stand underneath a burner and heated. Upon heating this compound, this compound undergoes sublimation, it sublimes, sublimes means changes from solid to gas. The organic compound present here it will sublime and the vapors will begin to rise, the vapors will begin to rise. These vapors will pass through the holes and enter inside the glass funnel, they enter inside the glass funnel. Am I making my explanation clear? Okay, follow this very clearly. When heating is given to the compound, then the organic compound present in the china dish, it will begin to vaporize, it will subline, it will change its physical state from solid to gas and the vapors of the organic compound will pass through the holes and passing after passing through the holes, they will enter into the glass funnel where the glass funnel temperature is it cold or hot you remember that you were you had covered the glass funnels outer surface with wet cloth or wet paper due to this the inner surface the inner surface of the glass funnel is now cold understood now when these vapors enter inside the colder surface colder inner surface of glass funnel these vapors begin to condense after condensing after condensing, they deposit on the surface of the glass funnel. They deposit on the surface of the glass funnel and some may fall on the filter paper also and some may fall, some condensed particles of the organic compound may fall on the filter paper also. Now what happens to the impurities? I told you that the impurities should be non-volatile, the impurities should be non-sublimable, they should not vaporize, they should not get converted into sol from solid to gas. So the impurities will remain here itself, only the pure organic compound will go through the holes and settle in the inner surface of glass funnel. After you make sure that all the compound has been sublimed, then you switch off the burner after switching off the burner, you let this apparatus undisturbed, do not touch anything, leave it undisturbed for some time and then after the apparatus has cooled, after the china dish has cooled, after the glass funnel has cooled enough, then you slowly rotate or remove this glass funnel and see your pure organic compound has settled on the inner surface of glass funnel. You will notice that the organic compound has settled as solid on the inner surface of glass funnel. Whatever is collected above the filter paper that is called sublimate. Sublimate is nothing but pure organic compound. You will collect the pure organic compound in the glass funnel. What happens to the impurities? They remain in the china dish and they are now called residue. Residue is nothing but impurities. Okay. So this is how sublimation is done. In order to make you understand clearly, I will show you some of the apparatus. See, this is a china dish. China dish into which you will pour your, you will keep your organic compound in powdered state. Now this china dish is covered with a filter paper. How should this filter paper be? The filter paper should have holes in it. I have not done any holes, it should have holes. How the holes should be? The holes should be very small, small enough to permit gas particles. It should be small enough to permit gas particles. It should not be bigger so that solid again falls back into the china dish. Once you cover this, once you cover this china dish with the filter paper then with holes then you take a glass funnel you take a glass funnel and invert it over the china dish clean now the mouth of the china dish should be covered or the stem stems mouth of the uh, glass funnel should be covered with the cotton plug after doing this much after doing this much you will cover the outer surface of the glass funnel with either a paper 
or by a cloth wet cloth then this is kept on a sand bath and that sand bath is kept on stand underneath burner and then heated now if this part is understood there are some doubts which arise first doubt why are we using sand bath or water bath why can't we heat this china dish directly one if you are heating the china dish directly then direct heat is supplied to the organic compound present inside as a result many a times the compound may undergo decomposition it may deteriorate for this to avoid we use sand bath we are supplying indirect heat to the organic compound so either use sand bath or water bath then sir can i make these holes here also no look the circumference of glass funnel till wherever the glass funnel is under that portion only holes should be present if holes are made outside the circumference of the glass funnel then these vapors will go out and the percentage yield of the organic compound will decrease so when you make holes in the filter paper kept over the china dish make sure that it the holes are inside the circumference of the glass funnel only then sir what is the use of wet cloth or wet filter paper which is being covered which is covering the glass funnel from the outside it is to make the inner atmosphere of glass funnel cold sir why do we use cotton plug why are we closing the mouth if this mouth is not closed then some of the vapors may, may escape and go outside also this will also decrease the yield for that purpose cotton plug is kept in order to avoid the loss of organic compound in the form of vapors i hope this part is clear understood you can use a sublimation technique for purifying what compounds either naphthalene or camphor or anthracene or benzoquinone indigo etc remember the principle the principle for sublimation is only those organic compounds which change their physical state from solid to gas directly without passing through liquid can be purified by sublimation and this method is used to separate sublimable compounds from non sublimable impurities this is principle and what is the procedure i'll brief the procedure within one minute follow this take impure organic compound into china dish and cover it with a perforated perforated filter paper over this an inverted glass funnel is kept with its mouth closed with a cotton plug the outer surface of the glass funnel is covered with a wet cloth or wet paper then the china dish is kept into a sand bath which is kept over stand and heated upon heating the organic compound sublimes that is it converts from solid to gas and the vapors will pass through these holes into the inner surface of the glass funnel there they get condensed and convert back into solid organic compound this is called sublimate and the impurities which remain behind in the china dish they are called residue which are later thrown away this is sublimation in our next class we shall follow and study some more purification techniques and the second technique is crystallization see you then thank you